end of 2020, LEGO released that brilliant new... What? Hey, dude! Can you park that somewhere else? I'm trying to film here. Tourist. The 10274 LEGO Ecto has become one of my favorite LEGO sets ever. I wondered, would it be possible to squeeze in a motor and a steering system without losing any of those lovely internal details or moving gadgets? Yes, it is. My name is Ben, and I will show you what I did. I hadn't used LEGO for anything but robotics or fast technical prototypes in years. Then there was the big lockdown and suddenly I had time. I decided to get me a copy of that cool large UCS tumbler and give it suspensions and motorize it with power functions. Then I got the Ecto-1 for Christmas. Like a 13 year old, I loved it. And I wondered if it could be possible to do the same. Packed with Egan's and Ray's equipment back here, there is not much space, even if it's really big. Now, power functions are not really an option. First of all, they are not produced anymore by LEGO. The most sophisticated part of power functions was probably the servo motor. You use that for steering. There are Chinese copies, of course, but especially the servos have been reported to be not very reliable. You may try to get the originals produced by LEGO secondhand somewhere, but the prices have already risen and they will soon vanish off the market. Besides that, Power Function is using an infrared remote control. And that is very much 80s tech. You always need to uh, maintain a line of sight and that's a bit like walking a dog. That's not fun. So I started digging into what LEGO has now to offer. And what? That is very confusing. There are many different systems, they are all connected somehow, but you also need different apps to control them. It feels like LEGO has many different departments working on similar topics without talking to each other. I ended up using LEGO's Powered Up because these components are affordable and have a small packaged battery box. The documentation on that is quasi non-existent. That is a total no-go if you are selling technical equipment. I don't get why LEGO doesn't understand that. It's like selling a spaceship with no manual on how it works. Luckily there's a website called racingbrick.com. I can only recommend them, especially when it is about powered up. They have all the information that LEGO should have given in the first place and some really good video tutorials on YouTube. Thanks for that. In the end I got it all fixed together I will call it Powered Up further on. That is also the current name LEGO uses for the mobile app that is required to control it. Okay, some tech talk. You have three objects to put inside. The motor, the steering servo and the battery box. For the small M motor there is some space under the base of Ecto-1, close to the rear axle, right here, and you can even keep the top uh, mechanical things that go up here, like the sniffer and the radar dish, working. So that's very easy. The M motor isn't very strong, but let's face it, that car is not supposed to be a fuel racer. The servo motor for the steering is more difficult. Servo means it has some kind of position control to go back to zero, uh, straightforward in our case. It needs to sit somewhere in the front, close to the steering mechanism. Um, most people, the few there are, tend to put the steering motor or the servo in front of the front passenger seat. If you use power functions, that thing is pretty big. I always loved that the Ecto has a front seat bench and uh, I didn't want to break that for the servo or lose the footroom because the whole thing is so detailed that it would just lose its charm. In Powered Up you could use a small motor like the one in the back, but that motor has no position control and so the actor cannot go straight after steering once because it doesn't know where that straight would be. Nine. 
And here it comes. In Powered Up, there is a large motor that has position control. That thing is smaller than the power function servo. It's slightly bigger than the uh, smaller M motor. And it can be used as a servo because it has the position control. And it is slim enough to fit just under the seat and to stick out not more than half a plate size. That's like 1.2 millimeters. Before, there was a steering mechanism in there so that you use the hand of God thing for steering the actor. Now you have a servo in there, so you don't need that. You can take that out and then put in the servo instead or the, the large motor and it comes in the same color, so you don't see it. Finally, I used uh, Brickling Studio to find a stable position for the servo motor and now all I had to do was put in the battery box somewhere. That is actually the biggest thing to hide. Even the smallest box you can get from Lego is a powered up hub. It has six AAA batteries inside and uh, is Bluetooth controlled. So all you need for that is a smartphone or a tablet. That box is, is similar to the Boovis, four bricks high, four bricks wide, and if you include the cables and the plugs here, about 10 bricks long. You have to um, keep that in mind when you build it in there. Now, additionally, on top there is a button that you need to reach. It's actually flat, so not sticking out. That's also important. And at the bottom there is, a, like here, something where the batteries are behind. So you want to reach that. You want to reach the top, you want to reach the bottom, and you want to somehow um, put in the plugs there. The usual attempt is to put this box somewhere in the back. Either right here. It just fits nicely in there, but then you are actually blocking the view onto the nice little details of Egan's and Ray's equipment back there. And you may even block the trap release. So another way is to bury it somewhere deeper in here. And then it can happen that you have to take out a seat or the garnish seat doesn't work anymore. Or what's even making it worse, if it's back here somewhere, you will always have to take off the roof and all the equipment to change the batteries. It would be best to reach it from the bottom and still be able to reach that button and still hide it away. And there is one place, just one. Um, no, it's not the engine. I like that engine too much and it's such a nice detail. Let's have a look. So I start up my powered up app and then I press on the seat there and it calibrates the servo. That's a very small table, so I'll just give it a little bit. <laughs> okay, so and now after like 10 seconds or whenever the batteries are drained, well, it's actually a couple of minutes, but all you have to do is tilt this thing over a bit and reach down here fumble these out and change them and then put them back in again and you're good to go. So finally all you need fits into the base frame like this. I made some full PDF instructions including hints on how to retrofit an already built Ecto-1 with less effort. I will put a link to the download page in the description. Additionally, I will add my powered up remote script with some fine tuning to make the steering a bit more precise. And if you wonder how the Lego Batman Tumblr was driving in the beginning, 
Tumblr? Oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. I will make a video on that soon. The link to the only motorization instruction out there will be in the descriptions already. I will probably also make another video on a do-it-yourself Bluetooth controller for the power function motors using Arduino code and the ESP32. You can program that for robotics too and control a lot more motors, LEDs or sensors than power function can offer. I started liking these motorizations, so if you have any other fancy Lego vehicles that need a motorization... <laughs> can you stop laughing? Any other fancy Le Lego vehicles... <laughs> I started liking these motorizations, so if you have any other fancy Lego vehicles that need a motorization, leave me a comment. I said this very serious now in a strong German accent, because I am German and I know how to make this accent and uh, I will not laugh when I do it because I hate it as hell. Thank you.